The Trans-Pacific Partnership, or TPP, contains provisions that will undermine the legal principle that state institutions should not face litigation in federal courts for the use of knowledge protected by intellectual property rights. The 11th Amendment to the Constitution provides for the sovereign immunity of the states from litigation under most federal statutes, with limited exceptions. On June 23, 1999, the U.S. Supreme Court issued two opinions in what are called the Florida prepaid cases. These and subsequent rulings have held that states cannot be held liable for the infringement of intellectual property rights because of the Sovereign Immunity Clause. Collectively, these cases have given states considerable freedom to use patented inventions, trademarks, and copyrighted materials for innovation, effective governance, and education. However, these constitutional protections for state university and research centers, libraries and archives, and almost all government agencies are being threatened by the Trans-Pacific Partnership, a huge new regional trade agreement that the Obama administration and the U.S. Trade Representative, USTR, are actively pursuing. The TPP will create an Investor State Dispute Settlement, ISDS, mechanism, which will allow private corporations to sue the federal government for intellectual property infringement by state agencies and institutions. For example, Cambridge University Press, Sage Publications, and Oxford University Press aggressively sued Georgia State University in 2008 for the use of an e-reserve system that allows students to access digital course materials. Under the TPP, those publishers would have been able to sue the United States in an ISDS case for massive damages. Academic journal articles sometimes cost as much as $40 for one digital copy. Since most professors distribute at least some course reading materials digitally, universities could be liable for millions of dollars in damages. Moreover, there is no exception for the experimental use of patented inventions in U.S. law. Given the role of state universities in conducting foundational scientific research, legal experts refer to state sovereign immunity as a de facto research exception. Without sovereign immunity protection, state institutions that regularly use intellectual property will restrict their normal operations out of fear that they will face expensive infringement litigation. The TPP should not undermine the effective functioning of our government, nor the ability of our universities to continue to innovate. Our states are afforded clear constitutional protections that preserve our rights as citizens. The TPP would violate those rights and harm American interests. Michael Froman, the head of the USTR, is a Harvard-educated lawyer, and he should know better than to attempt to use a trade deal, negotiated in secret, to overturn a decision on constitutional law by the Supreme Court. The TPP threatens not just state institutions, but the principles that define our system of democratic checks and balances.